you to understand this because it is critical. If you find a stock that meets strictly the criteria and definition of an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows, your job as a swing trader is to buy every single decline. Not some of them, not a few of them, but every single one. The only question you have to answer is when. Not if, when. If you find a stock that is in a downtrend, meaning that it is making a series of lower highs and lower lows, you obviously are in a very serious downtrend. I am telling you that I don't care what the earnings report says. I don't care what some high-paid Wall Street analyst with frayed shirt sleeves says. That every single rally in the stock is nothing to get excited about. As a matter of fact, every single rally is a sellable rally until that pattern or that definition ends. If you are in a sideways trend, meaning relatively equal highs and relatively equal lows, you as a market player can play both. You can buy the declines and you can sell the rallies. So let me go over this again, guys. If you find a stock that is making a series of higher highs and higher lows, that means that you are in an uptrend. If you are in an uptrend, you can buy every single decline. Your action is to buy the dips. If you are in a downtrend, and the stock is making a series of lower highs and lower lows, you are, that obviously means you're in a downtrend. If you're in a downtrend, your action is to sell every single rally. And when I say sell, that means that you can go short, or if you happen to be long in that stock, you'll want to get out on the very next rally. If it's a sideways trend, you as a trader can do both. You can buy the dips and sell the rallies. Buy the dips and sell the rallies. The only question is when. Now, guys, this may sound very basic to you, but I will tell you that this very simple concept gives you the ability to perform better than 98% of the so-called professionals out there or the talking heads on television programs like CNBC. The $64,000 question every single day in the market is, how, in, how do I know when a decline is an opportunity or when a decline is a reason for me to run for the hills? Isn't that the prevailing question? Aren't entire television shows dedicated to that one answer? One guy says you should buy because it's going higher. Another guy says no, the stock's uptrend is completely shot. There's no more momentum. Two guys battling on this one question, is the decline in the stock an opportunity to buy or is it the first sign of trouble? This concept answers the question. If the stock has made a new high and the decline is falling from a new high, that decline is buyable. It is not a reason to, to fly, to, to, to take flight. It is not a reason to get nervous. It is a viable decline. The same in reverse. Now, guys, let me tell you this. With this one simple basic concept, you now have the ability to hold your very own CNBC buy, hold, or sell session. <laughs> I promise you. You can be a guest on CNBC, and they can take the phones to John from Wichita, John from Wichita says, my broker says I should buy WXYZ. Do I buy it, sell it, or hold it? And you can say, well, sir, I've just taken a quick look at the daily chart of WXYZ, and I see a very powerful series of higher highs and higher lows. Each time the stock rallies, it is strong enough to take out the peak from the prior rally. Each time it drops, the sellers are incapable of bringing it as low as they did the last time. This is, in fact, a very strong stock. So that I, your job then, John from Wichita, is to buy on the very next decline. Another individual can call up after you've been thanked by John and say, you know what? My broker says that I should be buying ABC. And you say, well, ma'am, the first thing I want you to do, because I've just taken a, day, a look at the daily chart of ABC, ABC, the first thing I want you to do is to fire your broker, all right? Because this stock is in a, a severe downtrend. Every single time it rallies, it's a feeble rally that is, that is incapable of coming anywhere near the prior top. And every time 
the sellers take it down. They take it down deeper and further. This stock is being dominated by the sellers. And I suggest that if you happen to have bought already, that on the very next rally you get out. If you haven't bought, stay away from the stock until that pattern changes. I will tell you that this is the prevailing question in the market. And I'll show you precisely how very nicely it can work to your advantage. Obviously, very quickly, this is a real life, live uptrend. Um, it is certainly not as neat as my drawing. Um, that's the fault of the chart, not mine. Um, each high, as you can see, I have them numbered. I'm not quite sure if you can see that very clearly, but I have them numbered. Each rally takes out the high of the prior rally, and each decline, for the most part, takes out or, or fails to come anywhere near or, or it fails to break below the prior decline. Let's go to the next. Here's an example of a real life downtrend, right? If you'll notice, especially starting from peak number three, you'll find that every single drop falls significantly lower than the prior low. Sellers are just in control all the way down. And then they take a break, and the buyers bid the stock up a little bit. Buyers can also be short covers. But the, but the rally is a feeble rally that does not even come anywhere near the prior peak. And then we do nothing more than resume the decline again. All right? As you can see, that's obviously a series of lower highs and lower lows, making a very sharp downturn. Here's a live example of a sideways trend. Relatively equal highs, relatively equal lows. All right? Making up a sideways trend. If you look at the number four to the left, that is a downtrend. All right? That is the picture of pain. Can you hear them? <laughs> one, one, the sideways trend is the picture of uncertainty and or ambivalence. It is like after the period of pain comes a period of disinterest and comes a period of uncertainty as well. All right? So in many respects, after fear, you have uncertainty. After uncertainty, after fear, uncertainty, you then kick off into another, another phase of greed. And that's typically the cycle. You have fear, uncertainty, greed, uncertainty, fear, uncertainty, greed, uncertainty. And of course, greed is what trend? The uptrend. Fear is the downtrend. Uncertainty is the sideways trend. You've got the entire market covered. Let's move on. Now, here we come to some of the mechanics. And it's very important for you to get this down because this is the key to my firm's entire profitability on the trading side. This is the, this is the central setup for virtually every single one of our swing trades, this right here. This is the most important page I've brought for you. Basically what we are looking at, I want you to imagine those three bars as being three consecutive down bars. Now, I want to define down bars because it's not the traditional, it's not the down bars in the traditional, traditional sense. This setup, is three has, has, the, has the following criteria. I would like to see, after the stock has made a new high, I want to see a temporary period of pain. I want to see this gentleman buy the stock at 30 and not be able to find someone above him. Now I know we are about to kick off a temporary period of pain. And I want to see pain last for three to five bars. Write that down. After a new high, I want to see pain last for three to five days. Three to five. I've been trading for 13 years. And I will tell you that over 13 years, 
my partner Greg and I have discovered that if, when stocks are in uptrends, that almost 90% of the solid uptrends rebound after three to five consecutive days to the downside. If they have made a new high, all you have to do is wait in the wings for three to five days and then step back up to the plate and then find someone who has sat through pain for three to five days and you say, sir, <laughs> is there something wrong? Can I help you? Is that stock causing you trouble? I'll take that. I'll take it all, by the way. Oh, no, don't mention it. All right? <laughs> So the idea is that someone has actually bought at 30 and watched and sat through pain. Day one, they had a headache. Day two, they had a migraine. Day three, they cried on their spouse's shoulder. Day four, they just simply could not take it anymore, called up their broker or pressed the sell button and said, get this piece of junk out of my life. And I'll say, I like junk. I like to take the junk. I take all the junk. <laughs> 